Well, good afternoon and, and welcome to all of you. Thank you for all for being here this afternoon, especially on such a beautiful Sunday afternoon. I want to thank you for your interest. I want to thank you for the commitment that you're showing by coming here today to tackling some of the great issues of our day, how to create a sustainable future for our planet, and in particular, how to accelerate solutions for climate. I think we all appreciate that we're at a critical juncture today, that we have the opportunity to change the trajectory that we're on to create a different future for our planet and to create a better and more sustainable world. Uh, but it will require action on our part. It will require action urgently. In the next few minutes, I'd like to just share a few thoughts, first about the urgency of the challenge that's facing us, then uh, the reasons why I am guardedly optimistic that we can make a big difference in the trajectory that we're going on. And part of that is, of course, because of the work that's being done here at Stanford by our experts who are helping lead the way, some of whom you'll hear from this afternoon. Now, the video uh, showed, uh, highlighted uh, many of the urgent issues that are facing us today and have reminded us that we're at a defining moment in human history. The first predictions of global warming came almost 50 years ago. It's a sobering thought, and it's even more sobering to think that those predictions were eerily accurate about where we are today and the trajectory that we're on today. I think it's become increasingly apparent that the nature of the threat is incredibly serious. This has been hammered home by many events over the past decades, over the past years, over the past months. This summer has been a summer of extremes, extremes of temperature, extremes of climate events. Uh, and there's greater recognition of the importance of this. The UN Climate Solutions our Summit uh, just occurred a few weeks ago in New York. Uh, perhaps more poignantly, the youth strikes that have occurred all across the world have shown that the uh, young people of the world are rising and adding their voices and their sense of urgency to the issue as well. Now, each of us, I think, feels this at a very personal level. For me, this was uh, really captured very um, movingly by um, a healthcare worker who was cited in the Washington Post. And this person said, I'm deathly afraid, not for my kids, but for my kids' kids and what they will have to deal with. What are we leaving as a legacy besides a hot mess. Now, the commitment that I see in this room by all of you who have come here today, uh, by our faculty, by our students, uh, shows to me that we all believe that our legacy does not have to be a hot mess, but we know that we have to tackle the problem today and that we cannot delay. Now, I am guardedly optimistic about the future, and that is, of course, grounded in my appreciation of the work that's happening here at Stanford, as well as at many other institutions around the world. Institutions like Stanford can bring people together, can help catalyze new ideas, can help accelerate the development of new technologies, can create new knowledge free of ideology, and also help us act quickly and nimbly, and all of that is necessary for us to get to a better place. This type of work really is part of the DNA of Stanford from its founding in 1891. The purpose of the university is to generate knowledge and applications to better the human condition. Uh, the university has actually been at the forefront of climate science since the 1970s, and especially in the last 15 years, we made huge investments uh, in this area. Uh, many of the early pioneers of those efforts, many of the generous partners who have supported those efforts are actually here today. So I want to thank them, all of those who are here, for all their hard work over the years and also the clear commitment that they show to continuing this fight by their presence here today. In the last two years as a university, we've worked collectively to define where we want to go with the university over the next five, 10, 15 years and beyond. We've been doing this across all fields, uh, but we've had a very big focus on sustainability. Our vision has been coming into focus uh, the plans are being crafted and should be finalized in the next month or two. They include a number of priorities, one focused on transforming our energy system, including the grid, uh, the second on uh, accelerating the development of sustainable technology solutions, for example, for carbon capture, for batteries, for many other things, uh, also a focus on adaptability and resilience, and especially to protect the most vulnerable uh, communities in our region, in our nation, around the world, 
and also to use economic analysis and policy formulation to try to create incentives to protect the planet uh, and its inhabitants. In addition to our work in research, in engineering, in policy development, we believe we have an opportunity and in fact a responsibility to lead by example, taking advantage of our campus community, about 35,000 people, really a small town if you will, and to be a living laboratory for the implementation and development of sustainability solutions. Uh, over the past several years, we've made the commitment to decarbonize our campus from our peak less than 10 years ago. We are now 65%, we've reduced our carbon emissions by 65% in two years, in 2021, we will be 80% carbon free and then we will drive it to completion. We have also have a uh, focus and a commitment on waste reduction, recovering clean water and energy from wastewater, and we've made the commitment to be waste free by 2030. As we do this, as we experiment on our campus, as we generate data and experience and uh, new tools and implement them, we also believe it's essential that we engage and, and share all of our best practices with other universities, with uh, non-governmental organizations, with corporations, with governments around the world. We have to share all of these best practices so we can accelerate the development and the implementation of sustainability solutions at the local level as well. What makes me most optimistic uh, is the brilliance of our faculty and our students, uh, some of whom you will see today. Their drive, their expertise, their ingenuity, their tremendous insights are extraordinary, and above all, their unrelenting commitment and their passion to tackle the problem is what inspires me every day. So in conclusion, I want to reiterate my optimism but of course, we know that we can't just be optimistic, we actually have to get down to work. We uh, also have to focus on uh, pulling all the levers. There's no single lever that we can pull to get to the solution. We have to pull all of them. No one person, no one institution, no one nation can solve this problem for all of us. We have to work collectively. This is a global problem that requires each of us to engage, but each of us to engage also with our communities and communities around the world. But I believe that Stanford is well positioned to help lead in this through bold and transformational ventures. And with your help, I think that we can go the, dif the distance. So I want to thank you again for being here. I want to thank you for being part of the solution of what is perhaps the biggest problem and gravest problem facing humanity today. Thank you very much.